the soul of that boy who inspired me to up at that instant and run for the cliff. Larson is the last man in his unit still alive, and just 4% of the World War II vets are still alive. And in the sky above Normandy, a 97-year-old World War II vet skydives 75 years to the day of D-Day. June 6, 1944, Thomas Rice was a member of the 101st Airborne Unit that dropped behind enemy lines. This was the beginning of the end of World War II. Rice said today's jump was much safer than 75 years ago. That's because nobody was shooting at him. And you can watch as his feet are back on the ground. Rice said, beautiful jump, beautiful flight. Everything was perfect. And tonight, West Point Military is dealing with one of its cadets dying after a crash involving a military vehicle. West Point leader said the military vehicle rolled during an exercise early this morning. More than 20 others were hurt. This highlights the fact more U.S. troops have died in training incidents than in combat operations over the last couple years. According to a government report, in 2017, nearly four times as many service members died in training compared to combat. And tonight, national attention is on a dairy farm in Indiana after a group went undercover and claimed to have captured animal abuse on camera. We do want to warn you, some of this video might be hard to watch. This is from Fair Oaks Farm, about two hours northwest of Indianapolis. The group, Animal Recovery Mission, took this video. The group said it witnessed farmhands hitting, choking, burning, and force feeding cows and calves. Fair Oaks is a third-party company which sells their milk to Fairlife, the lactose-free milk. The farm said it fired three people in the videos before the video went public, and it fired a fourth person after that. The Indiana State Board of Animal Health said the group never went to the state with any evidence of abuse. The farm's owner said the video was disturbing and wants to make sure this does not happen again. Meteorologist Dante Jones up late tonight. Yeah, Still yeah. Late call. She takes a couple days off. Uh, right. Beautiful couple days. Yeah, though. very nice. Oh good time. Goodness. Good time for her <laughs> and show alike. Yeah, it's outside. Temperatures in the 70s. It's pretty pleasant. Not too muggy. A little on the muggy side, but not too muggy. I went for an evening jog myself. It felt great. 69 for us in Greenville. That's looking pretty good. Feeling pretty good as well. And a little cooler up towards Wapakoneta. About 63. Down Fountain, 61. Flirting with the 50s right there. As you had a little further south you get into those 70s, 69 in Dayton, 73 in Spring Grove, and 71 in Oxford. We're going to dip into the lower 60s as we head into the overnight hours. So it's going to feel okay. It's still on the warmer side, but when you see the second half of the weekend into next week, we get even cooler and that going to be some comfortable sleeping weather. You'll notice just to our south, maybe around the Cincinnati area, there might be a few light showers there, but most of it is in Kentucky. It's because there's a front just off to our south, bifurcating Kentucky in all honesty. And with that, it'll slide a little further to the north overnight tonight and tomorrow. So that might kick off a straight shower and thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon for our southern areas for the most part. So pretty quiet for the rest of tonight. We're not expecting any rain. Temperatures going to dip into the lower 60s. It's going to feel nice first thing in the morning. Uh, we're talking about temperatures in the lower 60s, partly cloudy, a little muggy, but dry. So the morning commute should have no problems. Unfortunately, though, the pollen is still going to continue to give you some problems. We're looking at mold being the highest culprit and then grass. Uh, after that in the moderate levels, but mold is pretty high. That's going to continue tomorrow and even into Saturday, and then I think we back it off just a little on Sunday when we get some rain in here. Here's what I'm talking about. Tomorrow, we're dry. Look at most of the rain staying just to our south, but we could see a slight shower and thunderstorm that rises up in our southern counties. Can't rule that out. Then by Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning's dry, Saturday afternoon when the rain comes in. So if you're making any plans for the weekend, I think the first part of Saturday, you're okay. And then by the time of the afternoon, and then on Sunday, we got more showers and thunderstorms. The problem with these showers and storms over the weekend is that we're not looking at a severe component, but we're looking at a lot of rainfall. Some of these could be slow movers, and then with the slow moving, it could train and move over the same areas, and so that could create some flooding potential with the already saturated ground. So just keep that uh, in the back of your mind for uh, later, later on in the weekend and to the first part of next week. All right, the feels like temperatures tomorrow are not going to be too bad, so the humidity is still going to be kept at bay. Temperatures are right around 80 degrees. So 62 overnight tonight, a few clouds, quiet, a little muggy. Then tomorrow, it's going to be pleasant, talking about lower 60s to start the day, and then we're talking mid-70s for noontime, and then right around 80 degrees, partly cloudy, a pop-up shower, a thunderstorm as we head towards the middle part of the afternoon. All right, here's that five-day 
forecast for you. 80 degrees tomorrow, oh so summer-like. Upper 70s for the weekend, a few showers and storms. Mid-70s, more rain and thunderstorms for us on Monday. But Tuesday and Wednesday, lower 70s sunshine. Overnight lows going to be comfortable in the mid-50s. All right, a great sunrise shot here from Jack Loudon in Beaver Creek. Thank you, Jack, for sending us this great shot. Send us yours on our social media pages. And, of course, Playing your day with Kirstie's on team first thing tomorrow morning at 425. She'll help you get through the morning. Middletown City leaders say an improved budget means there will be some summer recreation activities for folks this year. The city says the past several years it cut recreation programs because of budget constraints. This year the city council approved $30,000 for summer activities. The city will have summer adventure night for families and movies in the park. And our community right here in the valley is super focused on spreading positivity. The events planned and how people of all ages can get involved. Working overnight so you have everything you need to start your day on New Center 7 Daybreak. Daybreak.